morning. So we're on the other side of the Red Sea. We're looking back. We can see Pharaoh's army destroyed. The Red Sea has separated us from Egypt and the bondage there. In Egypt, there was groanings and sorrow. But now on the other side of the Red Sea, for the first time in the Bible, there's a song recorded. The song of Moses, the song of redemption. Our Father, we thank you for this song a song that we pray you've placed in each one of our hearts. Song of glory to the Lamb. Song of the redemption that we have in Christ Jesus. May he be honored in what we have today before us. In Christ's name, amen. So, we're to sing. Break forth and sing the song of glory to the Lamb. Wake every heart and every tongue to praise the Savior's name. Sing of his dying love. Sing of his rising power. Sing how he intercedes above for those whose sins he bore. Hallelujah. We're to have a song of redemption. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. No other is so loving, so good and kind. Crown Him with many crowns, the Lamb upon the throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee and hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Hallelujah. The song of redemption. All of us as Christians, we have a song that God has placed within our hearts, the song of redemption. Uh, the Bible tells us in the book of James, uh, the fifth chapter, 13 verse, if anyone is afflicted, let him pray. If anyone is merry, let him sing. You say, well, gee, then, then I don't have to have a song because I'm afflicted uh, in a period of of, of, of hardship. But remember, in Job 35.10, we read that God gives songs in the night. You know, there are songs that are in a major key, and there's songs that are in a minor key. Songs of the night are usually songs in a minor key. You remember in Acts 16.25, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. They were in pain. They had been treated unjustly. And they prayed to the Lord. But what happened to their prayers? What happened to their song? Uh, what happened to their prayers? It became a song in the night. And the Bible says that at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. You know, there are many hardships that we go through. And one of them, uh, a great hymn, uh, It Is Well With My Soul. A man named Horatio Spafford wrote that song. He had lost uh, his four daughters. They were ages, I believe, 11, 9, 5, and 2. Uh, his wife was traveling with them across the Atlantic. And four days out in the Atlantic on their way to England, uh, they struck another ship and his four daughters were lost at sea. His wife sent a telegram back when she got to England saying, saved alone. So uh, Mr. Spafford uh, boarded the next ship to go to England, and uh, the captain of the ship knew of what had happened uh, to his family. And uh, he came to him and said, you know, Mr. Spafford, this is approximately where your family was lost at sea. And Horatio Spafford wrote these words. When peace 
like a river attendeth my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll. So if it's peace like a river, how wonderful. But sorrows like sea billows roll may come as well. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Uh, uh, later on, a, a couple years later, a man named Bliss put those words uh, to a tune, and we know that it is well, it is well with my soul. And so there are songs in the night, there are times that we are afflicted, but there's always the encouragement that God brings to us that he's still upon the throne. And in Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10, the Bible tells us that joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So that in times of sorrow, in that period, when we go through, as Psalm 84 says, uh, the sorrow of, of Baca, the sorrow of tears. Let me just turn to that quickly. Psalm 84 um, and verse 5 Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee in whose heart are the ways of the Lord who passing through the valley of Baca that's the valley of tears make it a well the rain also filleth the pools they go from strength to strength you know sometimes we go through the valley of Baca the valley of tears but it's a period in our lives. And how wonderful when we can, as uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Spafford did, Brother Spafford, that we can make uh, those, those, that valley of tears can make it a well. How wonderful. Uh, God is so gracious. And then when he brings us uh, into that normal condition of of heart and soul for a Christian uh, as we think upon what God has done for us and the glory that is ahead of us and the joy of the Lord becomes our strength our strength for spiritual life our sp the strength of holiness for a holy life um, it, it's it's a uh, uh, it's it's a song God wants a song within our hearts at all times and that is such uh, a blessing uh, we read, in, in, and this is so important, in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 12, the Lord Jesus said, In the midst of the assembly will I sing praise unto thee. In the midst of the assembly will I sing praise unto thee. So there in the glory, the Lord is the leader of the song. Imagine right now you're in heaven or maybe you have friends or loved ones in heaven and there's a voice that they're following the voice of the true worship leader the Lord Jesus and he's singing praises unto God and he's in the midst of the assembly the midst of those of the redeemed and he raises his voice and one day we will hear his voice and we'll follow in song with him. How wonderful is that? You know, uh, David had uh, ordered the singers in Israel, the sons of Asaph. And the, the, the singers were not just uh, singers, but we find in Ezra chapter 2 and verse 41 that the, the singers, the children of Asaph, they returned with Zerubbabel when they came out of Babylonian captivity they came back not just to sing but to build in the rubble of Jerusalem so uh, in the midst of, of, of what they knew was destruction they had the hope of God and a song in their heart and, uh, and the, they, the singers came forward at different times when the foundation was laid and when the temple was rebuilt and they sang Jehoshaphat in second uh, Chronicles chapter 20 uh, verses 21 and 22 uh, he was going to battle and the prophet said God will fight for you so you know what uh, Jehoshaphat did he got together the singers 
and they sang. And as they sang, God uh, brought uh, them a great deliverance. It's so important to sing. There's not a time that it's not appropriate for a Christian to have a song in his heart. Uh, this is uh, what a testimony to the world that we always have a song in our hearts. It does, it's not to do with how well we sing. Put that aside. It's a song uh, in the heart. And uh, so when we uh, go back to uh, Exodus chapter uh, 15 and we have this um, picture of this redemption that God has given us uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ uh, because the, the Red Sea is a picture of what we have in the book of Romans uh, where the uh, God is for us and all of our enemies have been dealt with. Uh, the sea uh, through death, through the Lord's death, which is what the sea represents and his resurrection uh, we've been crucified to the world. Uh, we are dead to sin as we have in Romans chapter 6. Uh, we have been delivered from the powers of darkness. Hallelujah. All of this we see as we look back and we're cut off from that old life and that old world. We have a new life in Christ. And you say, well, I don't feel new, but the Bible says in Romans 6, to reckon yourselves, in other words, to count it to be so, that you've died with him, and we have a, a new life in him. Oh, we should sing, sing a song. And so that's what they did in Romans, I mean, I'm sorry, in Exodus chapter uh, 15. Then, in verse 1, then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord. That's so important. Don't worry about your voice. Don't worry about what you sound like. Sing from your heart. Sing unto the Lord. Sing unto the Lord. Uh, I've been, you know, involved in prison ministry, uh, ministry many years, and, and uh, I've had the opportunity of singing with men in prison. And I want to tell you, uh, sometimes they just can't sing very good. Uh, I've been in many situations where we sung a song that I thought I knew, but uh, there were so many different keys being sung at the same time and uh, so many different melodies that it was uh, difficult to do. But the point is, everyone was singing from their heart, and it made it all right because they were singing unto the Lord. That's so important. It's so important that we live our lives unto the Lord. And so they sang Moses and the children of Israel sang this song unto the Lord and spake saying, I will sing unto the Lord. For he hath triumphed gloriously the horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. Listen to this. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will prepare him a habitation. This is so wonderful. Based upon the redemption that we have in Christ Jesus, God can be with us. That's what we see in Israel. God was with them now. The pillar of fire in the cloud uh, later on in the tabernacle and after that in the temple. God was with them. He was traveling through the wilderness with them. He was a stranger, as it were, with them. That's our Lord Jesus. He traveled through this world as a stranger in a, in a world that was, was so distant from what he had originally created. And so uh, he came into this world and they hated him, the only perfect man that ever lived. And yet he went to the cross of Calvary to purchase a redemption for you and for me that we might have a song and that he might be the leader in heaven of our song. So to sing now as we see Israel singing unto the Lord is to listen carefully, quietly, and hear the voice of the Lord Jesus, the leader of the singing in the midst of the assembly singing praises unto God. How wonderful. Praise the Lord. The Lord is, and then he goes on, the Lord is a man of war. And of course, this is what is coming in a future day. The Lord's a man of war. This is the day of salvation. This is the day of grace. 
Uh, this is the day when, when uh, God is, is calling men to, to be saved from that judgment, to flee, flee to the cross of Calvary and uh, find security and redemption. Uh, even in this moment, if someone was unsaved, even in this moment to flee to Christ, flee from the wrath which is to come. And you know, as, as they look back and sing this song, it's like us hearing uh, in our own, as a Christian, hearing the words of the Lord Jesus from the cross in John 20, it is finished, he cried. It is finished. And so we look back and we see his death, that he died for the glory of God that he became sin in order to glorify God in the very place that we had sinned and to take away sin by the sacrifice of himself. We see that Red Sea and his death. Now, remember, we went through, or Israel went through on dry land because he died for us. Death has no sting. But as we look back, we hear his cry, it is finished. This is so important. If you want a song in your heart, you can't be looking at yourself. Ha, that'll be a very sad song. If you want a happy song, if you want the song of joy, if you want the song of redemption, you've got to hear his cry. It is finished, he cried. That bloodied and beaten man, that man who in weakness was crucified, so weak he couldn't carry his own cross, and yet he was able to carry the sin of the world upon himself. He was able to carry my sin, that great, great load of sin. He knew all my sin, knows everyone. He carried it at the cross because he is not just the son of man suffering at the hands of men. He's the son of God. Hallelujah. And he cried, it is finished. And so our song of redemption who remembers that cry and hears that cry in this moment. So, so let's put those two things together. Here is cry, it is finished. And then here is song there in the glory in the midst of the assembly singing praises unto God. Psalm 22 said that God would not hear his prayer. Why art thou so far from helping me, the Lord said. But then he heard him. From the horns of the buffalo, he was heard. And he has ascended. He resurrected and ascended back into heaven. He sits at God's right hand. He's waiting till all his enemies may be made his footstool. And that's what we read here. The man, the Lord is a man of war. Yes. But he wants people to be saved and he's waiting. This is the time of grace where God is waiting. He's long suffering and he's patient, willing that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And uh, verse 4, Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's chariots and his host had the casting of the sea. Uh, his chosen captains also were drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. Now, this is a song. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. Understand that there is no hand that will ever or has ever been raised against the Lord that will prosper. Judgment is coming. Judgment will come, my friends. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting for you to be saved, for me to be saved. I'm so glad that he waited till 1978, that he didn't come in 1977. But he came in that, that he waited till 1978 when this poor sinner uh, was saved. Uh, that, that song of redemption is in my heart as I even think about the fact that he saved me. Praise his name. And uh, so uh, let's just skip over to verse 13. Thou in thy mercy hath led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. There's that word redeemed. Liberated. The price has been paid. In fact, in verse um, 16 at the end O Lord till the people pass over which thou hast purchased you see in verse 13 we have the word thou hast redeemed in 16 thou hast purchased this is what God has done the blood of the Passover lamb had purchased them our lives are not our own we've been bought with a price 
And now through the Red Sea, through Christ's death, he has destroyed all the enemies that oppose us. God is for us. We look back and we say, hallelujah. We sing the song of redemption. Now, remember, they're in the wilderness. We're in the wilderness. But that doesn't keep us from having a song. It should never keep us from having a song, even if it's a song in the night. And uh, uh, so we'll, we'll just go on and, and, and see what happens now that they're no longer looking back at what God has done, but now in the present moment, where is their song? What are the things in our lives that can take away our song? Well, let's look. And... Uh, chapter 15 of Exodus and verse 22. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea and they went out to the wilderness of Shur and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now you remember, <laughs> Moses had said to Pharaoh, we want to go out three days so we can worship the Lord. Well, now they're three days out and a trial has started. There's no water. And they begin to sing the song, the dirge, so to speak, that they sang in Egypt uh, when there was no water. Listen. And they went in verse 23. And when they came to Merah, they could not drink of the waters of Merah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Merah. Merah means bitter. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So murmuring. Uh, a, 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 a bitter a, a problem something that is bitter to the soul and it can take away our song and it becomes murmuring this is not to happen this is simply not to happen we are not to be a murmuring nor a complaining people we're to maintain that song within our hearts oh not in of ourselves but by the power of the holy spirit if you want to look at yourself i tell you there will never be a song but you look up and see Jesus, the lover of your soul, there in the glory, preparing a place for you. There'll be a song in your heart. The Spirit of God will put a song in your heart. Praise the Lord for that. And so here they're three days in the wilderness. There's no water. They finally come to water. And there's great disappointment because the water is bitter. And they begin to complain. They begin uh, to murmur. And what does the Lord do? Well, first off, let's think of what's something else that can take away um, our song. If a bitter circumstance can, what about sin? Um, Psalm, I believe it's 137, when it says uh, when they were in Babylonian captivity, uh, Israel was, and they hung their harps upon the willows. You see, when we sin, and we come into the consequences of sin. It's pretty hard to sing a song, right? Unless it's uh, the song of, of repentance, uh, a, a song of, uh, of a cry for mercy, as David uh, sung in the Psalm 51. But they didn't have a joyful song. So sin will rob us of our song. And of course, then there's someone that may not even have a song. Uh, Revelation 1.5, there's a great... Uh, uh, song in heaven uh, we believe it's going to be in heaven anyway unto him that loved us and washed us from our sin in his own blood talking about the Lord Jesus what a wonderful song but that's the song of the redeemed there's many people in church that don't have that song say so you're going to heaven well I hope so well when you get there what are you going to sing uh, gee I hadn't thought about it you see the song of redemption unto him that loved us and washed us from our sin in his own blood that's the song of the redeemed you should challenge any unsaved person that you know what would it be like to be in heaven with no song well of course you'd never get to heaven with no song but just cause them to try to imagine the fact that grace is reaching out to them today through the person and work of the Lord Jesus praise his name and so Moses in verse 25 when the people complain he cried unto the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree 
which he, when he had cast it <clears throat> into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Isn't that wonderful? Well, what do you think that tree represents? Of course, it's the, uh, the cross of Christ. What is it, the only thing that can make a hard and bitter circumstance sweet is Jesus. It's to know that there is no trial. There's nothing that comes into a life of a believer that the Lord has not endured himself. No, no, no uh, uh, sinless human experience, no sorrow, no hurt, no pain that he has not endured. And if you're going through something now, understand that the Lord has been there himself and he knows it. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Right? We have the privilege of taking everything to the Lord in prayer because he understands. He's a man of sorrows. Why? Because he walked through a world where he was a stranger. And he saw all these things that in heaven there will not be. No tears, no pain, no sorrow, no death. But he sorrowed when he was here. And so when that bitter circumstance comes into uh, your life, when you bring in Christ and his sufferings and his death, then you can understand that his love was so great for you that he allowed you into this circumstance in order that he might show himself to you, that he might encourage you and lift, lift you out of it. But through it, you'll have a deeper appreciation for the person of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. May God give us grace to look at situations of our life in this way, that we might know what it is to cast <clears throat> to cast the tree into the waters and that they're made sweet so that we can drink. And in verse uh, uh, 27, and they came to Elam where 12 wells of water and three score and 10 palm trees when they camped there by the waters. You know, Elam is after Merah. And first we have to suffer and go through circumstances and learn sorrow and then we can enjoy a little foretaste of Canaan, or for us, a foretaste of heaven. You see, at, at, at Elam, uh, there was the uh, uh, 12 wells and, and 10 palm, uh, 70 palm trees. It's a picture of the rest that they have, will have in Canaan, in the promised land, in Emmanuel's land. And so that's what we have to look forward to. But first, there's the sufferings of Christ for him and then the glory that follows. That's the same for a believer. First there's sufferings and then there's the glory. But in the midst of it all, there's always a song because we're redeemed, we're redeemed, we're redeemed. We're on this side of the Red Sea. The death of Christ is accomplished. He's risen, he's ascended in heaven, hallelujah. Nothing can change that. Don't look at yourself. There's no song in the mirror. <laughs> no song in the mirror. But look to him and hear his voice. Hear that cry again. It is finished from the cross of Calvary. Rest, rest my soul upon what Christ has done. And then hear his song in the midst of the assembly in heaven, leading praises unto God in the midst of the redeemed. Hallelujah. Let's just turn for a moment in closing to Romans chapter 8. In Romans chapter 8, we have the uh, real song of the Christian that uh, accompanies uh, what we just saw in the song of redemption. And I'm going to begin reading in verse 31. Now just listen to this and imagine as you're on this side of the Red Sea, the blood has been shed, the true Passover lamb, has paid for all our guiltiness and all our sins. Through his death, that sinful man I used to be is no more. He deserved condemnation and, and received it in the judgment of our Lord Jesus and the death of our Lord Jesus that we could be with him a new life. Because I live, ye shall live also. 
a new life, resurrected life. Now, from that vantage point, Romans 8, 31, what shall we, uh, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? For he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him? Notice, it's with Christ. Every blessing, every spiritual blessing, all the promises of God are yea and amen in Christ. Outside of Christ, there is no blessing. So he that spared not his own son, looking back to Abraham, Isaac was spared. The Lord Jesus was not. He spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. He was delivered up for you and for me. How shall he not, how shall God not, with Christ, also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Praise the Lord. There's no charge against you. Don't charge yourself. You hear too often Christians, the, the, the moaning and groaning of Egypt as they look upon themselves and charge themselves afresh. Oh, my friend, look to the blood of Christ. Look to the death of Christ. Look to the living Savior and find forgiveness. It doesn't mean you don't need to repent. It doesn't mean we don't need to confess our sins to, sins to him, but we don't want to wallow in the sorrows and the bondage that he's delivered us from that represent Egypt. We're no longer uh, those men. We are new men and women in Christ. Praise the Lord. God has justified us. God has done it. Men could not do it. We couldn't do it. God did it. Hallelujah. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who may also maketh intercession for us. So listen to what he says. Who's going to condemn you? There's a voice there may be a voice on earth condemning you. It, it might even be Satan, the chief accuser of the brethren. But here uh, we have the voice of the Lord Jesus. He's always making intercession for the saints. This is not the inter intercession for sinners. He made that on the cross. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. This is the intercession for saints. This is his praying uh, for us as we go through the wilderness. This is why you will make it to the other side. He didn't say, let's go out in the middle of the water and sink. He said, let's go to the other side. So he's going to take you all the way through the things you're going for, through, and he is interceding for you. He's praying, and his prayer is stronger than any powers of hell that can oppose you. Praise his name. Now, verse 35, listen. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? What? Can a Christian be separated from the love of Christ? Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword or whatever situation you're going through right now, the coronavirus, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Some have stood strongly, and our brothers and sisters in foreign lands stand strongly for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Their lives are on the Lord, on the line. Uh, many have been persecuted. You know, in, in uh, Revelation 15, I think verse 3, that there's the song of Moses, the servant of the Lord, and of the Lamb. And that song is sung by those martyrs that during the tribulation period uh, that they uh, love not their lives unto death. They, they, they were strong in faith. I have to read that because I'm, I'm leaving out an expression that is so important. In chapter 12, and they overcame him, talking about the devil. This is verse 11. By the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they loved not their lives unto death. So they sang them in, 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 in chapter 15. They sing the song of Moses, the servant of God and of the lamb. See, the Song of Moses is what we just looked at. It's speaking of deliverance, the deliverance of God. But it's the Song of the Lamb because there must be a deliverer. Hallelujah. And he is the Lamb of God, our Lord Jesus. Verse 37, chapter 8 of Romans. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. 
What? Yes. In your circumstance, mine right now, in all these things that are against us, if God's for us, who can be against us? In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You see, God always brings us back to the love of Jesus, the love of Christ. Don't look at yourself. It's discouragement and disappointment. Cast yourself upon his love in every situation that you're in. We're more than conquerors through him that loved us. We'll make it through the other side. Think of Mr. Spafford and went through this terrible ordeal with his wife. And yet this song uh, that came from his experience has helped multitudes. For I am persuaded, verse 38, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers. Now listen to this. There are things present, nor things to come. Paul is so assured that there are things that are unknown. He says, I don't care. I don't care whatever it is, no height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. How wonderful is that? Where is that song, Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee and hail him as the matchless king through all eternity. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon the throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee and hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Oh, blessed Lord, thou art so worthy, O Lamb of God. We thank thee that thou hast placed within our hearts the song of redemption. We hear thy cry, it is finished, and we want to sing. We hear thy voice in heaven, in the midst of the assembly, singing praises unto God. We want to sing along with thee, and one day we shall, Lord. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you so. We give thee the glory and the praise. We commit ourselves to thee in any and every situation that we might be going through. In Jesus' precious name, amen.